We've looked at what blood is and how it's so important to the body, and that's one type of connective tissue. Uh, today, we're going to learn a little bit about muscles, which, as we learned, are controlled by nerves, and they are another form of connective tissue. Muscles are what the body uses to convert microscopic motions into macroscopic motions. So we talked about how there are many machines at the molecular level that are really good at moving forward. Kinesin is just one of them, but a related protein is called myosin, and it walks slightly. Uh, some of them walk one foot over the other, and others of them just kind of push on a different kind of fiber called actin. So with myosin and actin, you have the same kind of microscopic motions of pushing. So how do muscles convert that microscopic motion into macroscopic motion? Well, the way it works is by putting uh, all of those fibers together in long chains and long bundles. So you can imagine that if there are a set of a dozen myosin motors and one fiber of actin, and they're all pushing on that actin fiber, the actin fiber may move down by 50% of its length. Well, 50% of the length of a short actin molecule is not very long. That's only going to be a few microns. But if you can then have that repeated thousands of times on each, micron, on each actin fiber, then the entire one foot long rope of actin fibers will also change by 50% and you'll get a big six inch change in the muscle length. And that's what's going on inside of muscles. Bundles of actin fibers that are moving thanks to the myosin motors. Now, an activity that can help you kind of think about this is to go home and find a, a basketball and a smaller ball like a tennis ball. Now, if you take those two balls and stack the smaller ball on top of the larger ball and drop them, you'll be surprised by what happens. Normally, when you drop a ball, the best you can hope for is that it comes back up to the original height you dropped it, just a little below. A really bouncy ball might do that. Or less bouncy balls will come up only half as high. But when you put the small ball on top of the large ball and drop the two at the exact same time, the small ball will ricochet off the larger ball as it starts coming back up, and it will be launched well above the height that you dropped it. That's the same idea, is by combining the two balls' energy, you're getting a much bigger effect. And in uh, the actin-myosin system, when you combine the fibers of, of actin in one bundle with the fibers of actin in another bundle, you can start to get them to move across each other and pull in and do many mic macroscopic changes. So it's adding the effects of multiple systems in order to get the macroscopic change. Now, a story that goes along with this is the robotic industry. Most of the time, robotics are use uh, pistons and uh, cables around uh, electric motors, and everything is very hard and made out of metal or plastic. But a recent development in the robotics industry is to develop what are called squishy robots, robots that are using more muscle-like properties. So uh, just, just like uh, rubber, can uh, be stretched and compressed depending on whether it's uh, filled up with the fluid, uh, whether it, it expands in one direction and compresses in another. So also these robots can actually move and do jobs just by soft uh, changes in, in the rubbery properties that they have. Now when would these squishy robots be an advantage over the hard robots we typically see? Well, there are a lot of situations where the conditions and environment that a robot needs to move around in are, are changing and are uh, treacherous. And so using these uh, softer systems would prevent them from being uh, flattened and, and operating. Uh, and so people are developing these types of squishy robots using the principles of muscles. So in order to understand the kinds of things we're doing in technology, like in robotics, Sometimes it's absolutely essential that we learn about biology and take some cues from biology, which is what you're doing right now. And if you're going to go to the next level, you should look at the leaf, how are cells arranged in muscles, and also the leaf, how are cardiac and smooth muscles alike and different. The first leaf talks about the three different types of muscles and how are they, they are arranged. 
Um, and if you click on the extras there, you'll get an interactive website to look at how muscles do their job.